Good evening. Tonight our scripture reading will be from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 till 44. I read to you. And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you this, poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing to this offering box. For they all con contributed out of the um, abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for unconditional grace and opportunities. Dear Lord, May your wisdom, together with the knowledge and commitment of these lecturers, be the stepping stone of the future of our youth. But not only that, may their wisdom and knowledge be the rock on which our nation be bold. Not a nation that compare and judge, but a nation with integrity, love, knowledge, and above all, your wisdom. We ask of you to bless everything we share tonight, that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Dear ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Huyanand Tapama E Monate. It is indeed a great privilege to honor and welcome you to this special occasion, the inaugural address of Professor Dani Skata. In particular, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Prof. Sonia Swanepoel, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Community Engagement and Campus Management on the Maikeng campus, Prof. Ntebo Moroke, who is the Acting Executive Dean in the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. I'm sure she'll be watching this on the virtual platform. Prof. Herman van der Merwe, Deputy Dean, Teaching and Learning. Professor Dan Metzileng, Acting Deputy Dean, Community Engagement and Stakeholder Relations. Professor Jan van Romberg, Chief Director, Northwest University Business School. Professor Helian Janse van Vieren, Director, School of Accounting Sciences. And Jackie Lynn McIntyre, Deputy Director, School of Accounting Sciences. I also want to welcome Professor Susan Fisser, former Dean of the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. She was the person who appointed Prof. Dani in the first place in the faculty. And she has also been a mentor throughout his research journey. Welcome also to colleagues from all three campuses, friends, and family. Someone that uh, Dani will miss tonight Professor Dani would miss tonight is his mom, who was due to travel from Australia and due to the COVID protocols, she was unable to be here in person. But I'm sure she's received the link and she will be watching. So you're not gonna escape from your mom today. <laughs> this is indeed a proud and joyful occasion for the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences the Northwest University, and all of us present in person and on the virtual platform. Inaugural lectures are an essential component of the university's public events program, helping create a wider awareness of the latest developments in research in the faculty and the university. It also provides a platform for a university to showcase its academics, introduce them to the academic and non-academic community of the university and to provide the opportunity for the professor to engage with the general public. The inauguration of professors is a special occasion during which newly appointed full professors are inducted into office. It is a significant milestone in any academic's career. It is an opportunity for them to inform colleagues in the university and the general public about their research journey and update colleagues on their current and future research directions. It also grants the new professor the opportunity to answer for himself regarding his position in and contributions to his chosen subject field. The Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences is in a privileged position to have a number of staff members presenting their inaugural addresses this year in a variety of disciplines. Prof. Dani, tonight you can celebrate an important personal milestone with family, friends, and both previous and current colleagues. This is an opportunity for the university to recognize and showcase your academic achievements. Tonight, you will share with your colleagues, both within the faculty and more broadly, your research interests. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that the title of his address, The Battleground of the SME Accountant, has aroused your curiosity. You do not have to wait long. Prof. Dani will have answers for those questions racing through your mind. I now request Jackie McIntyre, Deputy Director, School of Accounting Sciences, to introduce Prof. Dani Skitta.
dear members of the procession, in particular the deans of the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences, the DVC present here tonight, all our colleagues, friends and family of Dani Skitter. Tonight I have the honor to introduce to you a very special colleague, a son, a brother, a husband and a father. Dani Skitter was born in Middleburg on 27 September 1975 as the eldest son of Wilma and the late Reverend Fani Skitter. He grew up in Fochville and studied at the Rand Afrikaans University, now the University of Johannesburg. He completed his articles at Henny Ace Auditors in Pretoria, after which he was appointed as the office manager at SABNT Chartered Accountants in Kimberley. Dani joined the Northwest University in 2002 when he was appointed as a senior lecturer in the Financial Accountancy Program in the School of Accounting Sciences. In 2005, Dani was appointed as a technical partner at LDSW Chartered Accountants and Auditors, and in 2008, he became a partner in the firm Allion Chartered Accountants and Auditors. Dani lectured to both under- and postgraduate students in the Financial Accountancy Program and received IT awards in 2007 and 2011. On honours level, he contributed to all the modules presented to students through lecturing and course development, as well as the accreditation and alignment of the program. Dani served on the South African Institute of Professional Accountants, CIPAS, Educational Committee, and acted as the moderator of the CIPA professional examination. He also presented accounting seminars and training for CIPA, the South African Institute of Tax Practitioners, and the Association of Accounting Technicians. He also provided the financial management training to the Northwest Government. Dani is currently the program leader for research at the School of Accounting Sciences. He is actively involved in the mentoring of students. A total number of 24 master's students and six PhD students have graduated under his supervision. And three days ago, Dani was also named the most productive researcher in the faculty for 2020. He is the author of 32 journal articles, three book contributions, and 27 conference presentations. He has been involved in research projects for a number of governing bodies, including SICA for a mandatory audit firm rotation and audit committee project, SIPA for the development of a competency framework for professional accountants, the Accounting Standards Board for a project in accounting for heritage assets, and the National Tre Tre Treasury for a turnover tax project. He also completed two funded research projects for the United Nations University, UNU WIDA, and National Treasury. Dani is married to Vanessa and is the proud father, father of Karen, Stefan, and Sinai. He is a keen chess player with a leeches rating of in the 1900s, meaning, or 1,900, sorry, meaning that it's almost a pro, and um, is the previous vice president of the Northwest Chess Club. He is also an active squash player and is currently the captain of the Porch Country Club's fourth team. And just as a surprise, Donnie is also trained in kickboxing. I think you didn't know that. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Prof. Donnie Skitter. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, Jackie forgot to say that I did 
I, I did a little bit of training in kickboxing, but she's the expert. So I just want to make everybody aware of this. Uh, Prof. Sonia and all the Northwest University officials, uh, Prof. Babs, everybody attending, allow me to, before I start with my presentation, to, to share with you who my family is, or who is attending tonight, who is family to me. Um, now, my youngest brother is currently in Australia. I hope he follows on the link. Um, and he is competing this weekend. I just want to mention to you all the, everything that is happening this weekend. He is competing this weekend in the, Iron, in the Basselton Ironman Western Australian Championship. Uh, so he is competing there. And then my sister is a dentist also in Australia. And her husband is, uh, he has another profession, but he's actually a professional briar. I don't know what the English word for briar is. <laughs> and he is competing, he is competing in this event, uh, a briar barbecue comp competition in Australia. <laughs> and then in the audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have on my right, my wife Vanessa, my two children, my mother-in-law, very importantly, my brother there. Um, now, he's a surgeon, and it's, for me, it's a huge honor to have him here with all his operations and for him to take off to be here. So it's, I'm very proud of him to be here. And then also my sister-in-law is sitting on this side with her husband, Bora. I will introduce you more formally a little bit later, but this, oh, I forgot to say my mother is then also following on in Australia. And she has the difficult task then to decide which of these events I showed you on the screen just now <laughs> that she, she, she must attend. Um, okay, I will start then with my lecture now. Um, the lecture will then be comprised of three main components. The first is a general background. Uh, then I, will, I would like to talk about my own academic journey. And then I would like to share with you a little bit what I'm doing in terms of my own current research. Now, in terms of the background, um, I'm going to talk about small businesses and the accounting for small businesses. Uh, now, with small businesses, cash resources are normally always limited. So there's always scarcity of, of cash resources for, for small businesses. And the SME accountant is required to provide a one-stop service. So unlike most of our candidates that we prepare who end up specializing in one of the four main subject areas, the small business accountants must be able to apply all this knowledge together. Uh, so a small business accountant will typically go and be, do the accounting, compile the financial statement, the tax, and then without even knowing it, apply management accounting like cash flow forecast, factoring, working capital manage, management. Allow me to give you three uh, recent trends in, in, in the small business environment or in their business environment. In, uh, currently, in the, engineer, the engineering firms uh, are suffering dwindling profit, profit margins. They are subject to predatory actions from larger in, international uh, competitors. And they have payment terms up to 120 days of the invoice date. Now, I would like to, to present to you these cases against and ask the question to our current colleagues as to do we, to what extent we really prepare our students for these scenarios. So for this first scenario, there's the third bullet day, the payment terms that are up to 120 days. So we would typically teach our students to, to, to that that is, is payable and how it works, but uh, we don't really, or the question is, are we really um, uh, preparing them for the real world scenario? Now, in this case, 120 days, you normally should, should submit your, 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 your VAT uh, every two months, and then after that, pay within 30 days. Now, if you sit in a, in a scenario where you must pay all of a sudden, where it takes you 120 days to recover money, it might put you in a little bit of a predi uh, uh, predicament, and it also puts you in that scenario where you need to, to take very difficult decisions for, on behalf of your client. Um, now, uh, 
the, the basic principle of that, if I may just quickly explain it to everybody, is that you as the, as the uh, VAT vendor must recover, or must, must, um, recover the VAT on behalf of government or collect the, the, the VAT on behalf of government and pay it over to SARS. But if the money is now not paid over in, in the, in, or if you don't receive the money in time, it's not so easy and it's a very difficult business decision then to, 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 to make. Uh, the second uh, practical example that I would like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is with um, commercial farmers. Nowadays, there's a lot of emphasis on, or there's a lot of risks involved in farming. There's also a lot of statutory compliance. For, exa for example, uh, water management. Uh, the question I see Rulai is also here, so maybe a question for Rulai. Uh, do we teach our students about compliance? Uh, so, yeah, there's the audit, there's the audit subject, but it, it appears to me as if there's compli compliance officer requirement um, for these type of scenarios, uh, farmers at having to adhere to stat um, uh, statutory compliance. The third example that I have for you tonight is for small-scale miners. Uh, these mining companies are subject to very difficult and strict rules and regulations. Uh, for example, the most recent mining charter. Uh, now, as far as I can remember, I don't know, Nico must help me, uh, we don't have uh, counting for mining in our, in our formal syllabus. Uh, we also don't have mining tax, if I can ask Prof. Karina. Um, uh, in our formal syllabus again. So are we really preparing our students for the SME environment is the question then. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to also just explain to you what a typical accountant would do in the SME environment. In my opinion, uh, or in my experience, an accountant in the SME environment is nothing more than a tax practitioner. So you would end up doing tax work uh, or the, the, the client would come to you and ask you to compile financial statements in order for you to submit the information for tax purposes. Every now and then you would like um, need to compile financial statements for the bank, but the, the majority of the times it's for, for tax purposes. Uh, but and now another question for the tax lecturers, do we prepare our students or do we make our students aware of the function of tax or in, in which domain this, the, the tax law uh, is, should be, is operating? Uh, is, are we aware of the fact that a tax law uh, is subject to the constitution of the Republic of South Africa and then also the promotion of Administrative Justice Act? Um, these questions lead me to the, to, the, to the main problem statement for tonight. Do we, what, what do we really know about the operational environment? Or then if, if I can take you back to my title, to the battle grant, grant of the SME accountant. And I will explain the term battle grant, battle grant a little bit later, but for now it's the operational environment of the SME accountant. That is the question for tonight. Um, against the free case scenarios that I gave you, and before I continue then in answering that, I would like to continue with my academic journey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was appointed in 2002 at the Northwest University. And at the time, or at, well, back then it was the Porchestrom University for Christian Higher Education, if I remember correctly. Uh, but at the time we were required to, to attend an induction course for new academic staff. And the, the, the first question I see, Surika, is also, yeah, I don't know if you can remember. We had to go and we, we had an, an assignment, and the assignment was to, 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 to find out or to establish what the philosophical foundation of accounting is. I don't know if you can remember, Surika. <laughs> but yeah, we couldn't answer that question, ladies and gentlemen. It was, we, we, we even went, if I remember, yeah, I, I do remember. We went to the dean, and we asked the dean, and he explained that it was the accounting re equation. Sorry, the accounting equation. <laughs> <clears throat> now, 
it's none of these things, don't worry. Now, the accounting equation is, is, is basically assets is equal to owner's equity plus liabilities. But we still didn't, and I still didn't, and maybe Siri got it, but I still didn't understand how that is our, our philosophical foundation. So we continued with, the, with this, this induction course, and in the end, the question was asked, is accounting a science? Do we practice a science in accounting? And of particular interest or re relevance uh, pertaining to this question is, was at a time there weren't, um, like now, universities and universities of technology. There were universities and technicons. So the technicons prepare the people with the more technical where you work, where you do technical work, and universities uh, would like offer the degrees in those days. So, um, the, in the opinion of the, the presenter, we as accountants do not, uh, do not teach um, or do not practice the science. <clears throat> okay? So, he was saying that, that we practice or we teach students the technique. Okay, so there's no accounting, debits and credits, and the bookkeeping, and the tax calculations, and everything. Um, and the implication with, well, was in no uncertain terms that if we do not practice science as accountants, we should actually not be at the university. And I, think, I think that was the, the argument right through the, the, the course, if I remember correctly. Well, that was what was bothering me the whole time. Um, so, but then I would also like to know from my brother on my right, he's a surgeon, what, is, what are they doing? Don't they practice also the technique or master the technique? And where's the science involved in that? And the first mistake I made was I got a little bit upset with this presenter. I, 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 didn't, I didn't debate the issue. Um, instead of doing that, I should have gone to our library and find this article. In 1941, in the very, fire, well, very well known accounting journal, the Accounting Review, this, this article was published. So people talked about this, whether we practice a science or a technique, whether we master a technique. And um, over the years, if I can just quickly show you the definition of, of science, science is the pursuit, I think we have that now. In the beginning, maybe not me, but of, after, after a while you get to that pursuit, you, you're after something, after more knowledge than what you teach your students or than what, what a textbook tells you the calculation should be or the journal entry should be. Um, so for me, the, the, this, the science techni slash technique debate was was something major in my own career. And in the end, I realized that there's, there's, there's something more we need to do than, than the, just teaching the, the calculations or explaining the, to the students the technique. We need to contribute a little bit more, and I will elaborate a little bit more on that point. So I continued my career as a lecturer. Uh, during that time, I was also involved in an in a auditing firm. The, in those days, we were allowed to be I'm not, I'm, not too, I'm not too proud to say this now of the words. I could have done a lot more at the university, but I had to do it. In my opinion, I had to see the real practical world, world of the accountant as well. And at that stage, I was thinking that I reached, now the, uh, managed, I reached the ultimate goal in the accounting profession. At that time, we had a, another debate with university management. I don't know if you remember the previous um, campus rector, Prof. Um, van Skalkwijk. He came and he, he argued, uh, or he wanted to know from the School of Accounting Sciences, Jakob will know, I think he, he was also involved in that, in that um, debate. So he, he just asked us, what, why, why don't we, as accountants, <coughs> develop new reporting standards? So the question is, who develops the the new rules, okay? 
uh, what are we really doing? Are we going to teach you again back to my initial thought around science or technique, mastering the technique? Um, what is it that we do? Do we, do we create new knowledge? Or is it a mere mastering a technique issue? In which case, I agree now, in retrospect, we should not really, we don't, we don't really deserve to be at a university. Um, so that was the, the, the yeah that was a question that was that that was also always on my mind for a long time. I was thinking about this question, and now now you can you can ask now our colleagues, Prof. Sonia, the the accounting standards are are developed by an uh, international body, but it's it's a very valid question for a non-accountant to ask. But who is doing the new developments in your subject area if the academics don't do it? <coughs> so yeah, uh, difficult one there. The next the next um, notable event that I would like to share with you in my own career was when I attend, well, I attended the practitioners forum. And at that particular event, I was asked to present to the practitioners the accounting updates. And one of the older practitioners got up and he, 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 he said to me, um, you got, oh, he, used, uh, he, he didn't use nice words, he was not friendly, and he said there's a huge gap between what we teach students and how accounting is practiced in the real world. He said to me at the time, as a practitioner, he also said that practitioners prefer to train accountants in-house. What he meant was that it's better for them to, to teach them or to train them themselves, okay, so for their accounting article clause. Should rather come to them and they will teach them. Uh, we are not required. Well, we are not. It's not necessary that we we um, form part of their training. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking now tonight about the the um, the big four auditing trainees. So they have a relatively easy easy path. Okay, they know they're gonna they sign their contracts. Uh, they kind of, they end up doing the audits, but if you if you are a small practitioner, you need cheap labour, and cheap labour is 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 um, an, a, a scenario where you have a practitioner, a specialist, and then the trainees. Now, if a trainee takes a little bit longer to finish his, his or her qualification, it act it's actually to the benefit of the practitioner in the small, small business environment. I'm not talking now about the large firms. There's all kinds of requirements for the larger firms. You should, you are, you should actually finish your, your training in, a, in three years or whatever the period is. But in a small firm, the practitioners, it was evident to me that I actually prefer the, the students not to, not to qualify as planned, to enroll at uh, at a distant learning university like INISA and pass every now and then a subject but don't really progress and don't sometimes not really qualify as an accountant. Uh, so I was sitting between this, the, I, I had to decide now, okay, where are we now? In the university, the university management tells us we don't practice the science, we don't contribute, we don't generate new knowledge. In the, in a practical world, in practice, they are saying we don't teach the we don't teach them the right the practical what they are supposed to know in the real business world. A little bit later, allow me to share just the last point. A little bit later oh, sorry, I in two thousand thirteen I became then the program leader for for CIPA. Um, I resigned from the auditing firm and I focused on my academic career. And towards the the end of my, well, not the end of my career, uh, until recently, uh, Prof. Sonia sitting here in front came to us and she spoke to us for the first time. And she asked us this question. What is it that you can enter on your CV at the end of each? Yeah, I don't know if you remember, Prof. Sonia. You asked us that question. <clears throat> 
So for, for my colleagues, and this is just me, that, that this was just me that was important for me. I was thinking, okay, now I'm lecturing. Um, okay, I was not as good as a lecturer as Nico was, but okay, I got my ITA, ITA award, so in my own world, that is good enough for me. <laughs> what, what is it that I'm going to, 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 to write in that line on my CV? If you only teach, there's, there's really only applying a technique and you can't put that in your CV. So I went to, I, I went to look at the, the CVs of uh, Marwe and, and uh, more renowned researchers in our faculty, and I saw they have these entries. Okay. Either a master supervision of a master's or a PhD degree, or a conference proceeding, or an article. Okay. And in our world, ladies and gentlemen, that is, that is the quest for new knowledge. There's nothing else. Okay. We can carry on teaching the technique, mastering the calculations, understanding and, and um, calculating or figuring out the most difficult accounting calculation. But if we don't understand the environment for which we train these, these um, candidates or these students, we will never, in my opinion, contribute to the world of science. That's my accounting background, um, or that's my journey, uh, not accounting background, my journey at the university that I would, uh, would like to share with you before I continue with my, with my next slide. So in my next slide, I'm going to share with you my, my, my own research, the research that I'm currently busy with. I started after what happened now to me. Uh, after I realized, okay, I need to do more than just teaching. Uh, I went to the practitioners. I said to them, okay, I will, the next time you want me to present to you an update, I will do it free of charge, but in return, you must, do, you must complete a questionnaire for me. Okay, Professor Sonia, that was now before ethics and all these <laughs> other requirements. <laughs> so, so I went and I, <laughs> yes, and the scientific committees. <laughs> So I went and I, and I asked the practitioners, and again, ladies and gentlemen, Nico, it's not a, your, your world, it's the small business, small businesses. And I asked them to, to rank the subject areas in accounting. And they ranked taxation as number one, accounting as number two, auditing as number three, management as number four. Now, management accounting as number four. Now, uh, Rulai, you will remember I, I showed you this. We couldn't believe the auditing, the auditing requirement by the practitioners. So at the time, the New Companies Act came in, and the New Companies Act did not require small businesses to be subject to an audit. Okay? So it was, very, it was very funny or very out of the ordinary for us. To, we didn't understand why they wanted us to do auditing, even more importantly than management accounting. Now, I saw Professor and Sirika Sir were looking <laughs> to each other just now when I mentioned management accounting. Um, I will also show to you that we do management accounting, but it's, it's in a different, it's, we don't know we do it. I'll explain it to you now. So management accounting is not lost, it's just at the time it was ranked in this order. Um, at the time also, ladies and gentlemen, we had to decide at the university whether or not we want to present internal auditing or auditing. So the students complained. They said auditing was too difficult, but the practitioners said we must do auditing. And we, had, we actually did a few years of internal auditing, and I, as, as, um, as program leader, decided that we should do auditing instead of internal auditing. There, were, there was another reason why I wanted us to do auditing. Uh, although the the um, governing bodies, and in our case, SIPA, say that it's, it's okay to do internal auditing. They still continue to ask. Remember, I was now involved in the, in the exams. So they still continue to ask external auditing. So we didn't choose external auditing for the right reason. It was for this other reason, but it ended up to be very important. Um, so I would like then to as I'm talking tonight about my own research, I would like to 
honor or recognize all my PhD students, but I can unfortunately only talk about uh, those who are, who are, who are doing uh, the same topic that I did with my, that, that is my own, currently my, my, my own interest. Um, now to, if I remember now, I just quickly want to remember now, uh, so I'm still very proud of Tuli Matusi, Patrick Herrera, myself and Marvick uh, supervised that, that student, um, Eliana Strauss, uh, who else was there, Queen Mpofo, and Aya oh yeah, Matt Umatoso. Uh, but tonight I would like to talk about, this, as I said, the students who, who chose the same topic that I personally prefer, that I personally like. Now this guy um, is also following on the live stream. He, he confirmed to me just before we, we came here today. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guy by the name of Paneli Tlamini. He's from Zimbabwe. I want to share with you, Prof. Babs, when he came to present his proposal, uh, he told us he arrived in a bus from Zimbabwe. He came to, and he presented, and when he was finished, I wanted to take him for coffee. And he said, no, he had to go, the bus is leaving. So he had to take a bus right after presenting. He had to, and it was like, then I, well, I found out then afterwards, it was like an overnight bus. So he went through all that trouble to come and present his proposal. It was in the days before we are doing our presentations over Zoom. He came to present in, in, in Potchefstroom, and he traveled a long way from Zimbabwe. Now, this, this um, particular study in the field of management accounting uh, was, is almost done. Uh, it's completed, but it's not yet examined. So I can't refer to this individual as Dr. Baneli Tlabeni, but I'm fairly confident that he will that he will pass his exam. That will, yeah, that he will get a positive positive mark. Uh, overall, I I, I, I supervise six master students and one PhD students, with, which is this student who is almost finished. Now with Specific, with specific reference to the SME environment, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to share with you tonight uh, sometimes funny feedback we got. Um, and this is our world. This is, this is how the small businesses talk. So it's not, again, it's not a corporate businesses with, the, with the, um, very professional directors. It's the real SME owners. So in this case, he asked, he asked the applicants or the, the, the respondents in his study, do you apply management accounting in your business? And uh, let me, well, I'm, I'm sure most of you already read, but let me just quickly read it. Okay, yeah, you, my friend, we are not using those systems. We have not identified the need for all that. As long as I'm making profit, it is fine with me. Now, this word, these bookish things won't take us anywhere. We need to make money. Uh, you will, uh, I think most of you will, will, will relate to that, of, that type of conversation. And that's the real, real world that, 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 that I'm interested in, that triggers my, my interest. So we continued. And then we saw after some del deliberations on the subject, it became apparent that they were I'm, I'm familiar with the term management accounting, but we're in practice applies, apply, still applying some of the management accounting uh, principles that we teach. Uh, so it's not a it's not an issue of not that management accountant thing is not important. It is not seen in the small business world as as a main subject area. But we still do apply management accounting. Now, um, with regards to the role of government, and this study was done in in Zimbabwe, the uh, respondent said, and. I'm sure we might just as well got this type of feedback in the South African context. It's a possibility in my opinion. So the first point I said is absolutely nothing we are getting from government except for the statutory instruments which hamper our operations most of the time. We always hear it in the media that the government is supporting and promoting the success of SMEs. Maybe we are yet to witness this support shortly. It's the same, same scenario in South Africa, the Davis Committee, with my own research. Uh, we did a project with, with Treasury, 
and I made a lot of promises, but there's very little to be seen. Now, the next study in auditing, in sequence now, if you remember now that ranking I showed you just now, um, it, at, there's a little asterisk there, and I just want to explain it to you first. At our institution, we don't, we don't offer a master's or a PhD in auditing. Okay? So if you choose an auditing topic, you would enroll for a, a master's or PhD in accountancy, even though it's an auditing topic. Okay. So this gentleman, the photo that you see here, um, Ms. Dr. Cornelius Tutter, he is an, he's also less, oh yeah, I forgot to say, he had to cancel uh, the day before yesterday because of his wife's um, um, operation. He was really, he was going to be, uh, I'm very sure about that. Uh, he, okay, so in addition to his, his study, or his PhD study, he's also an uh, official in the army. Okay, so if I remember correctly, I can't ask him now, he's not here, but I remember he was like a major. Now it's a, it's a high-ranking official in, in the military. And he's also, he also has a legal background, he has an LLB. Um, and he's a small business practitioner, and in addition to that, he did his PhD under me. So in the beginning, it was very difficult, uh, but perhaps in Afrikaans culture, we must call the older people, um, I wanted to say um to him in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, Corey Clitter. Now, the, the thing with Corey is, and that's also the reason why I have this word, the battleground, in my title. He always wanted to bring the military um, <laughs> terms into his study. And I, the more I try to explain to him, but currently the military has not, has not got a very good name in the South African context. And we're going to appoint, at that stage, perhaps um, local examiners, not international uh, examiners. So they're going to think. But we compare the SME, the rules that we propose to, to, a, to an institution that is not so strong in, in the current day and age. So I had to always convince him uh, in our interaction and con conversations that military terms should not be included in his PhD, but I promised him that, we, that I will include it somewhere else. And for that reason, I use battleground and not operational environment. <laughs> <laughs> now also, <clears throat> we also went on after his, after his PhD to present a paper and it was published in a conference proceeding. And I've uh, you'll see there on the slide, this particular gentleman, uh, Dr. Corey Kluter, won the best PhD award in 2018 that was sponsored at Saipan. I was very proud of that award. Now, with regards to the economic contribution that SMEs make in the South African, well, firstly, internationally, uh, they worldwide, research shows that worldwide they contribute um, 95 percent or uh, more than 95 percent to the business population and constitute 60 to 70 percent of total employment. In the South African context, the percentage is 68.2 percent, close to the 70 percent uh, on the first line. Now, um, the issue with auditing, he noted in his study that um, the perception still exists that statutory audits, remember now that was just after the new Companies Act was introduced where auditing was not a requirement, or small businesses was not required to be audited. So at that stage, he noted that the perception still exists that the statutory audit does not really add any value to the reader of the entrepreneur. Okay, but, but at the same time, Section 29 of the Tax Administration Act requires uh, I'm just going to read you the first guy there. Proper tax records, uh, that proper tax records have been kept in one of the official languages of the Republic in connection with that person, so as to reflect and explain all transactions. Now, I don't see any of the older um, practitioners here tonight, um, but if Corey was here, he would have remembered. In the old days, that is, I was an a, a, a auditor an auditor in practice, but in a small business. I did my articles also in a small business environment. And in the old days, this was exactly what we did in terms of auditing. 
for the small businesses. We, we, had to get, we had to keep proper records. Okay? So if there was enough evidence, if the supporting documentation was there for all the assets, liabilities, and most of the expenses, the audit was done. There was no additional audit procedures. Um, so, and I think, well, he, he very correctly noted that this is exactly why the auditing requirement is still, why the practitioners deem the auditing to be still relevant and necessary. He also noted that excessive legislation for SMEs is a real concern. I, I, uh, the first quarter there, uh, during a three-year period, I think it was from 2015 to 17, uh, the South African government introduced or produced 2,864 separate regulatory instruments. It's impossible for any, any individual to keep track. And remember now, for the small businesses, there's no compliance officer. There's only the accountant providing a one-stop shop. Um, to keep track of all this legislation and to adhere to it is, in my opinion, well, in our opinion, impossible. Uh, in the field of accounting, ladies and gentlemen, I did my own PhD in, in small business accounting. It was back in the days, it was still the statement of generally accepted accounting practices for small and medium enterprises, in other words, a uh, small GAP for SMEs. It was subsequently adopted as the IFRS for SMEs. In essence, it was the same, same standard. In my particular case, I noted um, that these small businesses do not like formal structures or formal mechanisms. Uh, they, it only restricts the, the entrepreneurial flair, and I will always remember that particular quote, the entrepreneurial flair of SME owners. And don't, don't throw them with formalities. They want to run their business. They don't want to come and adhere to a lot of formal structures and rules and regulations. Another useful, well, another uh, notable point from my own studies was that um, this particular quote where, where they say, SME owners are often left bewildered by the complexity of the information provided in financial statements. In layman's terms, ladies and gentlemen, they don't understand what we are telling them. And I've seen it in my own life. I tried my best to explain basic accounting principles when we go through the balance sheet when I, back in the days when I was a practitioner. I tried to explain to them, but they did, just did not want to understand. They, did, they, were, they didn't have any interest in our world. Um, so, with regards to the, to the next subject area, taxation, I was in a privileged position to, master, to, to supervise 13 master students and one PhD student, and now I must again say, this, this, okay, this one finished, she completed, she, was, she examined, she can call herself a doctor now, but then these other two are in progress, and this is the two gentlemen that you can see on the screen. Now, the gentleman on the right is Mr. Uh, now is uh, Mr. Ernest Brustwam, and he is submitting at the end of this year. Those of you who know the deadlines, it's the 10th of December, so he's aiming for that deadline this year. Um, he is, the topic of his study is, his PhD, is the self-assessment system of taxation, tax compliance, cost and behavior of SMEs in Ghana. Uh, we already published two articles out of his PhD before he submitted. It's, uh, I interpret that through Prof. Sonia as that you should have the publication before you can submit. I know we want to change the rule, but I like that rule. I just want to say that to you. <laughs> <laughs> then the other gentleman, and you will see that they're on the same photo, is a guy by the name Munyarazi Duva. is planning to submit his PhD early next year. Uh, who is doing his PhD in the, uh, entitled The Context and Role of Presumptive Taxation, Implications of Current Taxation Practices in Zimbabwe. Uh, now, can you, uh, you will see there, Prof. Karina, the two titles are almost, well, not almost exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's in nature the same study, just in different countries. And it was, it was a huge, uh, yeah, surprised to see these two gentlemen together. 
coincidence is the word, I suppose. Um, and they presented and they ex shared with us their own experience, both practitioners, both understanding the world of the SME, both understanding that we should find an easier way for small businesses to pay tax. Uh, the, the, the other study that I would like to mention, and I don't see her, she was going to come, I don't know if there was, oh, there she is, Mpachalele and Bluvi there at the back, a colleague of ours at, at UNISA. Uh, Mpachalele, I don't have a photo of you, um, but uh, I will introduce you to everybody a little bit later tonight. Now, in the South African context, Mpachalele is developing a tax compliance framework for micro-enterprises in South Africa. So the major issue for us in the, in the discipline of tax is, is the very difficult compliance issue. Again, you hear that compliance officer, we must make sure we teach those students compliance. Good. Um, now, notable quotes from, this, from the combined studies, the free studies, free candidates, uh, the burden to comply as I already mentioned. And then um, there's, there's some intention, and again, this is now based on scientific evidence. It's, it's, it's real facts. Okay? There's some intention that small businesses do want to comply, but I don't, it's so difficult, they don't know what, if they actually comply. Uh, then also uh, tax challenges, uh, specifically for small businesses, uh, it's the aggressive nature is maybe a good idea for somebody to do a, a follow-up study. Uh, the small businesses find adhering to, to, to tax, complying to tax, so much difficult and it's even uh, more expensive for them to comply. And that was also, there's also scientific proof for that. And then newer businesses, and especially in the current day and age, it's so difficult to start a new business. For new business, the new businesses have specific challenges. Which brings me to, to the summary. And for me, there's no better way to, to... Okay, let me first summarize now what, what we did the last three years. And that's, the, for me, the highlight of everything. So I was, I was honored, there's no other word to describe it, to be involved in, in PhD studies. You know, PhD is the ultimate qualification that you can get in, at any university in all four the disciplines. Um, tax, accounting, auditing, management, accounting, but specifically pertaining to the SME environment. So I'm now in a position to say, okay, here we are. Um, Pachalele, there at the back, I just want to see if you go like this or this. We can go and publish a book now. Now, let me explain to you why. Under taxation, we have the three candidates. Uh, account, oh, I forgot to say, in, under accounting, even though I did my own PhD study a long time ago, it's, over 10, well, it's about 10 years now ago, but uh, I have now a new PhD student who is a very prominent member of a well-known governing body in accounting, and she's also going to do this, her PhD in this field. Uh, and the auditing, there's only one guy, um, Dr. Corey Clutter, and the management accounting, uh, we have Vanelli um, Dlameli. Uh, but I forgot to say, I was attending Leon De Beers inaugural lecture, and he shared more his experience when he first met his international partner. I also have a few international collaborations going on. I don't want to talk about that now uh, because I'm passionate about SMS. Okay? Uh, then he also explained about this website, ResearchGate. Okay? And he explained ResearchGate as, as, a, as a platform like Facebook. So he, he said ResearchGate is like the Facebook for, for academics. And I came to realize that was a very true thing he said. Uh, whilst we were doing this management accounting study for, and whilst we published uh, one or two articles, this guy from, um, from America, a very well-known guy in the field of management accounting, Gary Calkins, contacted us and offered, well, asked us if, he, if we want to collaborate. Um, so, yeah, we are still going to ask Professor and uh, 
the experts to assist us, but it's now my ultimate goal to publish a book then from all my experiences, or w not from all my experiences, together with all my partners in this field, for all the main subjects, areas that could very well be the survival kit for SME accountants in this military term battleground of accountants. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me conclude then by saying that um, to the top management sitting here in front, uh, Professor Sonia, over the years we, I saw that in, in, in the faculty awards, uh, or the, the, the achievers in research in our faculty was came mostly, most of the time, from tourism. Now, if I think about the discipline, I don't know tourism, I can only think of trying to interpret the experiences tourists have when they go to tourist destinations and maybe a little bit of management. That's my own limited experience. <coughs> now, in my opinion, we as accountants can offer so much more we have legal, a legal angle. In the legal doctrinal world, we can add a lot. Um, I think the only issue for us is to get to that point where we understand we need to, to pursue, pursue new knowledge and not only merely teach what the textbook is telling us to do and what the governing bodies tell us to do. Um, that is then... Yeah, I would like to conclude with that. With that's our overall plan. We will get there, Prosonia. We accountants, we will get there on the on the research. We didn't do so well the last couple of years, but we are. We have good plans in place to 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 contribute our weight. Um, allow me to say a very quick thank you to any two groups of people. Now, um, as you know, there will be a function year after. I will I will speak to. I will thank you individually, all the colleagues attending tonight. But I would like to point out two individuals, or two individual groups of people. The first, and I think um, nobody really thought about them. So the first, I was told, this is now, well, let me just explain it to you. So there were this year two rounds of inaugural lectures. I was supposed to, to present my inaugural lecture last year. Um, now, with COVID, we had to, there was a double round this year. So I want to, in particular, say thank you to Esma and Shantai sitting there uh, for all their artwork, and, and I believe it's your last one. So uh, um, there's it's going to be the last celebration. I hope, uh, I don't know who you report to, we'll give you a day off or so. <laughs> I can't make that promise, but we'll ask them now. Um, so uh, Esma and Shantai, thank you very much. I, I must say, this Esma, yeah, I, they were, there was not a day when she did not remind me about everything. <laughs> <laughs> and if she did not, I would not have made this, this presentation in time. So thank you, Esme. That was very good. And thank you for reminding me about everything. Then the other, the other group of individuals that I would like to thank tonight is, um, is poor <clears throat> Mr. Stefan Lowe, uh, who must attend all these functions with his wife. <laughs> And, and also, and thank you, Stefan, for attending. I will definitely buy a drink after this. And also, the, the, uh, as I wanted to say the executive dean's um, husband, Prosonia's husband. I know she has a, the, she's the D, deputy vice chancellor, uh, acting DVC. Um, uh, her husband, she told me that he's not really attending these type of functions. So thank you for attending tonight, and to me it's an honor. So yeah, um, I will say, I, I, can't, I can't start here. I can't, I can't talk long stories about everybody attending today. I'm, I'm very grateful that you are here, that you were here tonight. And uh, I will say to you um, in a personal capacity, thank you for attending. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good evening.
Dumelang. Goeienand. What a wonderful privilege to participate in Prof. Dani Skitter's inaugural lecture. It is indeed an honor, as I was part of his promotion process, to reach the pinnacle of his academic journey, becoming a full professor. Those of you who are at the university will know that every year in the end of October or beginning of October, there's an APC, an Academic Promotions Committee. And um, you, you prepare like you're writing the ITC or the APC. Your documents is flagged this side and that side because every other dean and every other deputy vice chancellor there is grueling you about your candidates. So you need to prepare very well. And Esme and her team will always prepare the files and then we'll have a prep session and, um, and then we have to make sure that we are extremely prepared for our candidates and our faculty. Because as I'm putting on my old faculty of economic and management sciences hat, that your reputation is at risk at that meeting. You need to make sure that all the candidates you there present are credible and meet the requirements. And it was easy one, uh, Prof. Dani. Yours was an easy one for me to present. Now, when I um, reflected on your inaugural lecture, the battleground of the SME accountant, I once again realized how our perception of accountants has changed over the years. And I got this little phrase which says, Roses are red, violets are blue. You hate accounting, so we'll do it for you. <laughs> and that was typical in the olden days. You're the bookkeeper. You know, that is your role. But you emphasized the responsibility of accountants to find innovative ways to provide more support to SMEs struggling to survive in a very difficult situation, very difficult circumstances in which they operate. We often hear the argument that there are limited research opportunities in the field of accountancy. And you also refer to that in your inaugural lecture. But I remember Dr. Max Price at UCT many moons ago said, if the School of Accounting don't start publishing, we're going to move them down to the University of Technology. So you were quite right in the beginning. But I think you proved that that is only a myth because you received the research award on Wednesday in the faculty as the most significant contribution by an individual in the faculty in 2020, only for one year. Please give him a loud hand of applause for that. I'm not sure if you, if that has really sunk in. And then Prof. Babs told me, you published six articles with an article equivalent of 3.47. Four PhD students completed. We're only talking about 2020. Two full dissertation master students. Four structured master students. And you delivered the paper at an international conference. You really had something to add to your CV in 2020. <laughs> well done. And two wonderful achievements in one week. Your inaugural lecture tonight and this award that you received on Wednesday. So research in accounting plays an essential role part in creating new knowledge. It's about deciding and implementing new standards that you've reflected on, but also presenting unusual economic transactions in the financial statements. Learning our new tax laws impact clients and employers. It is quite a bit. So research in accounting discipline is indeed essential. Tonight, 
you made the Northwest University, the faculty, and the School of Accounting proud. Thank you for your dedication, your hard work, and your commitment and pursuit for excellence. Prof. Dani, well done, and a hearty congratulations to you. Northwest University also want to thank your wife, Vanessa, your children, your family, your friends and colleagues, those who are blessed to be here tonight, others who is far away, but they keep you in, your, in their hearts. We will keep on continuing with support for you on your journey in the future. It is my pleasure, uh, my pleasure, uh, Prof. Dani, if you can come forward, to present you with a certificate of your promotion to full professor, as well as a handmade pen set to remind you of this accomplishment. Well done. <laughs> 